this Labor Day, come out as a village and do what is necessary to ensure that our roads are safe for our children, but also to ensure that our children are able to have facilities for play and socialization within your communities. We join Prime Minister Andrew Honus's call, let's make child safety an all we take. Our Child Month program continues with some advice followed by the news. Good day, I'm Stephen McHugh and this is your JIS News for Monday, May 13. The 56 million US dollar Hagley Park Road Improvement Project is on track for completion by the end of this summer. That news comes from Ramona Lawson, Senior Communications and Customer Services Officer at the National Works Agency, NWA. She tells JIS News that with the overpass bridge now paved, work is being done to allow access. So what we're working on now is to complete the approach ramps or roads to the higher overpass. Um, we are working now on the Hagley Park side of it and we should be completed there in a matter of days in terms of putting in the fill and, and, and proceeding to do the pavement works. Ms. Lawson says pavement works have concluded on a 250 meter section between Maho Drive and the Seventh Day Adventist Church in the direction of Halfway Tree. Work will continue into mid-May to complete another one kilometer above Keezing Avenue. After that, the NWA will pave the opposite side of the carriageway, heading to three miles. While we are working on the pavement um, aspect of the project, we are also working on installing um, the Jersey barriers as well. And there are now just a few properties outstanding where we are currently retracting um, the boundary walls. So those works continue. The Hagley Park Road Improvement Project is designed to significantly improve traffic flow in the corporate area. Two surveillance vessels and four pickup trucks have been added to the Jamaica Defense Force JDF Coast Guard Fleet to boost its operational capacity. The donation was made on Thursday by Charged Affairs at the U.S. Embassy Eric Kant to JDF's Chief of Defense Staff, Lieutenant General Rocky Meade. The maritime patrol aircraft working with the offshore patrol vessels and the intra patrol vessels that the U.S. donated will allow us to better tackle the illegal trafficking and other criminal activity that takes place via our maritime space. The items are the final delivery of a 7.7 .7 million U.S. dollar package from the Embassy that includes five Boston whalers, five secure all-round flotation equipped safe boats and four pickup trucks. We hope that these boats will enhance the JDF's capacity to secure Jamaica's beautiful coasts and waters and ability to coordinate with international partners in tracking and disrupting criminal activities that hinder the growth of this region. Head of the European Union delegation to Jamaica, Ambassador Malgojata Vasilevska, says the EU's continued budgetary support to Jamaica is a signal of trust in the country's economic progress. Budget support is a particular modality that um, a country has to qualify for and um, it's not granted to, uh, to everybody because there has to be sound public finance management, transparency, accountability, reporting and so on. Ambassador Vasilevska was speaking on the JIS's Get the Facts program recently. 
Over the years, Jamaica has benefited from over 250 million euros in budgetary support from the EU to undertake policy reforms in the macroeconomy, as well as the justice and security sectors. Just last month, Jamaica and the EU signed two multi-million dollar grant agreements, providing 3.6 million to finance the country's public financial management reform program and 16.5 million euros to improve Jamaica's forestry management. Over the next six months, Dr. Wesley Hughes will lead a team in public discussions and consultation with critical stakeholders on the Green Paper for the National Health Insurance Plan. At the end of that process, the Green Paper will be revised and approved for phased implementation in the next financial year. The document was tabled in Parliament on Tuesday by Health and Wellness Minister Dr. Christopher Tufton. He says the Green Paper is expected to lead a final proposal for providing appropriate levels of access, coverage and financial protection to the population. Too many Jamaicans are being denied access and we have to fix it. And in that fix has to be a financial model to dealing with this. And that's what the National Health Insurance Green Paper that is stable today is intended on doing. In the meantime, Minister Tufton says government is looking to amend relevant legislation that will require private health insurance holders to use their coverage at public facilities. Over the coming months, we will have discussions to amend the law where appropriate to ensure that we have access at least to the database so that we can charge against the private insurers when they use the public health system. Labor and Social Security Minister Shahini Robinson is calling for increased public support in the fight against child labor. The minister's renewed call comes as the nation prepares to observe Workers' Week 2019 from May 19 to 25 under the theme, Yes to Decent Work, No to Child Labor. We believe that the issue of child labor is everybody's business and that it is an unacceptable and illegal practice which must end. According to a 2016 Jamaica Youth Activity Survey, over 38,000 children are involved in child labor. Minister Robinson says that in addition to a public education campaign, work is ongoing with the U.S. Department of Labor and Windrock International to stem child labor. During Workers' Week, the ministry will lay wreath at the Aggie Bernard Monument in downtown Kingston on May 20 and host an awards banquet to mark the centennial of the International Labor Organization and Jamaica's trade unions on May 22. And finally, the Institute of Sports in Sports Primary School Track and Field Championship will now be held in three regional zones, Eastern, Western and Central. The changes which take effect for the 2019 championship will see a record of 217 schools participating from all parishes. Stadium East in Kingston will host the Eastern Regional Championship. The Central Regional Championship will be battled at G.C. Foster College in St. Catherine and St. Elizabeth Technical High School will accommodate the Western Regional Championship. Sport Minister Olivia Grange, who made the announcement recently, says the changes are necessary to accommodate the increase in the number of participating schools. She says it will also allow for more distribution of prizes. This year, the top school will receive $250,000. And this is in each zone. The second place, $200,000. And the third place, $150,000. So we have tripled the prizes that we will give out this year because we're talking about three zones. Schools that place from fourth to 10th place will receive $75,000 each to purchase well-needed sporting gears and equipment. Minister Grange also announced that the top winner of hurdles events at each zone meet will receive a set of hurdles to improve their skills. And that's it for JIS News Today. I'm Stephen McHugh. Thanks for watching. Protect yourself from the flu virus. Visit your nearest health center or doctor to get the flu vaccine. Cover your mouth and nose when coughing and sneezing. Wash your hands regularly with soap and water or by using an alcohol-based hand sanitizer. Avoid the spread of germs by not touching your eyes, mouth or nose. And be sure to regularly disinfect surfaces and objects that are used often. Remember, your health is your responsibility. As we celebrate Child Month, here's a timely reminder about the importance of vaccinating our children.
Globally, cervical cancer is the second most common type of cancer in women with over 85% occurring in developing countries. Every year, 528,000 new cases are diagnosed and there are approximately 270,000 deaths. By 2050, without any intervention, the number of diagnosed cases of cervical cancer is expected to increase to 1 million per year, with approximately 90% of the deaths occurring in developing countries like ours. A major factor is the human papillova virus, HPV, of which there are approximately 200 types that infect epithelia, or skin tissue. At least 14 types of the human papilloma virus have been found to cause cancer of the cervix. Types 16 and 18 are responsible for 70% of cancers of the cervix, which is a second leading cause of cancer-related deaths in Jamaica. The virus can be transmitted through skin-to-skin -skin contact, from mother to child at birth. Current estimates indicate that every year, just under 400 women are diagnosed with this disease, with approximately 185 dying from the disease, with the majority of deaths occurring in women between the ages of 40 and 64 years of age. A prevalence study conducted in Jamaica in 2010 revealed that the overall prevalence of any type of HPV infection was 54%. Cancer-causing HPV types were detected in 34.9% of the women, and HPV types 16 and 18 were found in 10.5% of the general population and in 71% of women with abnormal pap smears. This reality has prompted the Jamaican government to take the initiative to prevent cervical cancer through the introduction of the bivalent human papilloma virus HPV vaccine. The World Health Organization, WHO, recommends that HPV vaccines be included in national immunization programs as a core strategy for primary prevention against cervical cancer. WHO states, Mr. Speaker, that HPV vaccination for girls ages 9 to 14 years is the most cost-effective public health measure against this disease. More than 70 countries around the world, including more than 20 countries in Latin America and the Caribbean, have already introduced the vaccine. Several studies and monitoring by the World Health Organization, WHO Global Advisory Committee on Vaccine Safety, proved that HPV vaccination is safe and works extremely well, decreasing the number of HPV infections and related precancers. The bivalent HPV vaccine introduced by the Ministry of Health in schools at grade 7 to girls ages 9 to 14 provides for 90 to 100% protection against HPV types 16 and 18. The vaccine is offered free of cost. Bear in mind too, by the way, that the cost to administer one of these vaccines, for us, the cost is somewhere in the region of seven, eight US dollars. If you go into the private sector, you're looking at anywhere from 11 to $15,000. So it's not inexpensive. This vaccine is not mandatory, and beneficiaries received opt-out forms for parents and guardians to give or refuse permission for their girl child to receive the vaccine. We can take it that the indication, if anything, is that they want this. They identify with this. I remember one girl indicated that her mother actually called her aunt, who is a nurse, for advice, so that spells good. It says that persons are prepared to consult, get information, and then make informed decisions. And so that is going well. Approximately 22,500 girls were targeted for the vaccine's introduction in 2017, with each girl needing two doses given six months apart for full protection. Generally speaking, the process has gone smoothly. 
the school-based strategy for implementation seeks to facilitate greater access to the targeted population. This covers the cost for social mobilization and communication, cold chain equipment, training and sensitization, and procurement of vaccine and vaccination supplies. And this disease prevention strategy will save the government millions. The Ministry of Health estimated that annual cost for the program after introduction will be 73.3 million Jamaican dollars. In Jamaica, the estimated cost is of, of the just under 400 cases annually, Mr. Speaker, is some $274 million. I should point out that this figure is only for radiotherapy and does not include diagnosis and chemotherapy. And for the individual, not just the emotional and physical trauma caused by this cancer is removed, but the financial burden. In the United States, cost on diagnosis is approximately some 15,000, 15, just under 16,000 US dollars. If the patient survives for a year, this right goes up to approximately 30,000 US dollars. Despite vaccination, persons will still need to do their routine pap smear to check for any threat or signs of the cancer, as the key to effective treatment if it should occur, is early detection. For more information, or to have your concerns answered, you can call the Ministry of Health's toll-free line, 1-888-1-LOVE, or 1-888-663-5683. Also email hpvinfo at moh.gov.jm. You can also visit the website moh.gov.jm as well as social media channels. Be an active participant in your child's life. Spend time with your child. No phones, no television, no distractions. Just the two of you. Get to know your child through play. Why not go to the park and get on the monkey bars? Sharing a meal can also be a time of bonding. If your child's in school, be involved in school activities. Speak with your child's teacher, follow up on their progress in school and see how you can help. Assist them with homework, attend parent-teacher meetings and support school fundraising events. Remember, your child's future is in your hands. Safeguard it. So glad you are a child of mine. I say be careful what you teach your little children. Make sure I know something to hurt them. Mind what you say to my sister. She could be the next prime minister. Sexual abuse is always a very difficult thing to confront, particularly when the alleged victim is a child. Parents, if it is that you suspect that your child has been sexually abused or is in a vulnerable set of circumstances where an abuse may occur, we encourage you to have dialogue with your child. Take the child to the pediatrician who normally attends to the child. If there is no such pediatrician, take your child to the clinic, to the hospital, to some medical practitioner who can do an assessment for you. It's very important as well that we don't just look at the physical side, but we also seek to find kind of the kind of psychosocial support that a child may need. Does the child need a session with a counselor? Does the child need to speak with a pastor who is used to dealing with these issues? Does the child need to get that ongoing psychological support to assist with the healing process and also to assist the child in becoming strong enough, as it were, to deal with the various processes that will follow once it is that you suspect an abuse has occurred. If it is that the child actually discloses when you engage the child in discussion that yes, mommy and daddy, I was abused, we encourage you to entertain the child, to listen to what the child has to say to you and to take it very seriously. So we really urge you to have those discussions 
and to seek guidance in terms of do I speak to the police about this, which we always say you have to, because once a child has been sexually abused, it's a criminal matter, and it means that once at all possible, the child should be assisted to go through the processes so that the perpetrator can in fact be held accountable. Support your child and let them understand in very clear terms that they are not the cause or the reason for this abuse having been perpetrated. But the most important element is to support them, get them access to the services that they need and give them a chance to have you give them that listening ear. For these tips and of course any other information that deals with children, that is anyone under 18 years, please feel free to contact the Office of the Children's Advocate. We're at 72 Harbour Street, downtown Kingston and our numbers are 948-1134 or website www.oca.gov.jm. Thank you. Watch what you teach your little children. Make sure I know something to hurt them. Mind what you say to me sister. Cause she could be the next prime minister. How well do you know your child? What he or she likes or dislikes? Favorite food or color? How about who their friends are? Make the time. Get to know your child. It helps to build their relationship. Makes it easy to keep them safe and it helps their development process. Intelligence rules the world and ignorance carries its burden. Powerful words from our island's first national hero. Watch as we take you to an institution that is pushing back against ignorance. A stone's throw from the Caribbean Sea is the Negril Branch Library. Picturesque, warm, tranquil, a haven for the community in this busy tourism mecca in Westmoreland. Bringing together children and adults alike, the library provides the place and space to fulfill educational and recreational needs. These services can be accessed throughout the entire Westmoreland Parish Library Network. The Westmoreland Parish Library Network has eight libraries, branch libraries, one major library, one mobile library service. We have five full-time libraries, three part-time libraries. The Negril Branch Library has developed a strong network which has resulted in several partnerships which enhances the service capacity. Through partnership with the Rock House Foundation, the physical structure of the library has been transformed and crucial resources have been provided to strengthen its impact on the community. We've expanded the library from what was originally 500 square feet in the front to a little less than 4,000 square feet. I think that it, um, you know, it stands up to standards of a public library anywhere in the world. It's, it's become an enticing physical environment. People like to be here. Um, and that was, you know, that was one of our objectives in, in creating the library uh, so that it would be an enticing kind of place for both children and, and adults. The Friends of the Library Committee is working to ensure that concerted and consistent steps are taken to promote the importance of the library service, primarily among the youth. The objective is really just to make the library better, right? Um, more efficient, more available to the kids in the neighborhood, um, to promote this idea that the library is a place where the kids can come, it's fun. Um, learning is fun. I'm inspired by Marcus Garvey who says intelligence rules the world, ignorance carries its burden. This library is a testament to beating back ignorance. In engaging its members and users, the library is cultivating an appreciation for technology through the Global Libraries ICT project. The Westmoreland Parish Library Network received 60 computers from the Global Libraries ICT project two laptops for the mobile library service. At the Negril Branch Library, we got five of those computers here. We use them for social media training. 
homework assistant and a tech club. The integration of technology is transforming the way how all users, young and old, interface with the various programs and services being offered at the library. I am so proud to know at my age, at 72, I am doing computer. You can't tell how proud I am to be a part of the senior citizen in computer class. The children enjoy the Tiny Tots section where they come and they will select various books, especially interactive books. They enjoy, um, even though some of them might not be familiar with the words in the book, but the pictures are very bright and colorful and so they will tend to look at the pictures and make up their own stories based on the characters they see in the story. While building technological knowledge, there are other means to build the recreational needs of library members. We also do performing arts. It is still one of the top um, one of the top activities that the library has to offer. The Grill Branch Library's ongoing process of transformation and innovation ensures open access to information and lifelong learning. And that's how we close out Jamaica Magazine for today. Be sure to join us tomorrow around about the same time right here on this station. Stay in touch with us, won't you? Visit our website, join us on social media and watch our YouTube channel. You can also drop us a line at jamaicamagazine at gis.gov.jm. On behalf of the entire news and production team here at the GIS, I'm Adrian Atkinson. Thanks for watching. This has been a production of the Jamaica Information Service, the voice of Jamaica.